Master Modes has been talked about a little bit recently. Uh, it's going into testing for Evocati, and we haven't had it confirmed that it'll be an Arena Commander in 3.20. This is actually finally happening. We're finally seeing a pretty big change to the flight model that has been being talked about since our first video here, November 11th, 2021. But now let's jump ahead and talk about some long-term plans. Little caveat here, all these things we're gonna talk about haven't been started yet and they may still change over time, but we wanted to share our thinking just the same. Most important aspects we want to change in the future is the problem of high speed. We know that high speed combat doesn't work well, and we also know that low speed combat between two and 300 meters per second is incredibly enjoyable. How are we gonna resolve that? We don't know yet, we'll see. So that was our first hint at the fact that they wanted to do master modes. And it comes on the tail end of a whole overarching update to combat. Next, we're gonna jump forward about six months um, to May of 2022. So this is last summer. Why are we trying to move the speeds down? It seems counterintuitive to something else on the outside. Don't we want things to be faster and more intense? In the words of George Lucas, Yes, so it, it it basically works up to a certain point. So in combat, there's a thing we call combat geometry, and it's how ships interact with each other. Um, it's basically how ships interact. And at a certain speed, this falls apart, and it becomes basically a nose-on-nose -nose fight. If you go towards each other, you just fly by each other. Jousting. And then by the... Yeah, jousting. Then basically, by the time you've looked around, you're two or three kilometers away from each other again, and it's repeat. So what we want to do is we want to bring that combat closer. And... You have to slow things down so this um so it works on a, it works on a much closer distance and then we can work on a much more accurate kind of weapon system for different velocities of weapons so the weapons can have the strengths um you know and missiles become more effective outside of these ranges so you can cover there and it just allows us to kind of control what the combat looks like and make it much more interesting that it's much more about you know the geometry and kind of trying to get an edge on your opponent and then once you get that edge on your opponent being able to accurately kind of you know, win against them, but it takes, but it takes, but it's a challenge to kind of get there. And bringing the speeds down just allows us to keep the distances close. And then you can kind of use the different ships we have in the game for the actual different purposes I have, rather than just being this. Everything goes quickly by each other all the time, and, you, and basically you're shooting at a very small point. It allows us to kind of allow people to get edge on, so you can get an edge on your opponent, and then you can face them, and then you've got a full face ship to shoot at. Um, which we don't, we, we, which we didn't really have before. So it's about moving the game towards that style of combat and allowing all the systems we have and all the weapon types we have to kind of make a difference and matter. Because at the high speeds, everything just becomes high speed to that point, and the differences don't matter as much. Um, and this, um, it's something we've been working on behind the scenes for, uh, for quite a few months, and I don't think we've really. So we're we're going to probably say quite a few times today bringing the speeds down but we're not going to explain how we're doing that here because we we could spend like a whole hour or a whole separate isc talking about what we're going to do so we'll, we'll save that for another time but um yeah the the goal is to have those slower combat speeds because that improves combat but then we've got a another plan for not crippling traversal around the universe because we're, we're not just going to go oh ships are only going to go 300 meters a second now bam tough um we we are aware that like combat is just one aspect. I wonder why they didn't decide to just go back to combat and cruise mode. It it's so close to what the game played like before. Before what was it three change? This is almost exactly how it used to be. It just didn't do anything with your weapons and shields, if I remember correctly. Aspect of the game, there's a whole lot of traversal that needs to not be hindered by that. So. We'll, we'll talk about it more in depth uh, another time. Basically, that was another explanation of why they're trying to slow down the speeds. Now, from there, we went to October of 2022 with this well-produced piece on Master Modes. Uh, the red hair was not a difficulty to get out. We this just washed my head. This is we've talked about many, many times in the past. And it's something we've tried many things with. You know, we've tried limiting things at speed. We've tried adjusting handling at speed. We just, we've tried so many things to kind of manage the negative impacts of speed on combat. When ships are going fast in combat, they usually just end up very far apart, which is not very interesting, and it just devolves into jousting very quickly, which is also not very interesting. 
The second you create a longer distance between you and the target, your angular requirements to maneuver to that target are just, are just extremely small. And this is a very obvious math reason why high-speed combat is kind of the opposite of I what fight. we want to achieve. <laughs> meaning I try not to, but I always end up doing it. effective position and maneuvering. We want the combat to be closer and to be more turn-oriented. So rotations should matter more than just flat speed. Having very high speeds that are pretty much the same between all ship classes negates a lot of the opportunity for smaller ships to flex different types of gameplay. Another big issue with the speeds in combat is it's very hard to keep players engaged in the combat because players can move so far so quickly in such a short space of time. It's quite hard to keep a track on your opponent. So you might think, oh, why don't we just make the ship slower and call it a day? Well, we can't do that. The main reason we can't just make everything slower is the size of the Star Citizen world. We've got huge planets where we need to go from the planet's surface up into space. We need to transverse between different systems. So essentially, we can't have just low speeds all of the time. There's a massive universe out there to explore. There's planets to explore. And the feelings we want to capture with the speed, we still want an element of danger that you can still go too fast in lots of situations. We have tried an awful lot uh, over the past few years with what would, what are called soft speed caps, where there is no speed cap on ships, but we encourage gameplay to occur at a lower speed. But it doesn't really work because the we advantages <laughs> of flying fast in terms of defense is just better. So since the last year, the focus <laughs> like, of the Future team... It doesn't really work because y'all won't bite. <laughs> ...shifted very heavily towards 142 and nailing down the flight and space combat experience for it. And I'm very proud to say that we finally found a really good working solution that we're going to show today. That's, I think, also a really important thing to remember is like, he just said that they found a solution for Squadron 42, and now they're going to show us that solution. At this point in time, they hadn't even applied this to Star Citizen. So they have to go through the difficulty of figuring out how to apply this to a ton of different ships as opposed to the four that we would fly in squadron and i think that's why even though this is working in squadron at the time of this video it has now taken them almost a year plus just to figure out how to get it to work in star citizen and now we're only seeing nda tests and it's not coming to the pu so i think part of the the effort it's taken to get this into the pu has actually been hey um does this even work for star citizens situation a master mode is a thing that is globally applied to your ship um, and we have two of them we have scm which is now relabeled as a standard control mode and qcm or qm for quantum mode the idea is that between these two modes we can constrain the speeds in combat and also get all of the maneuvering like high speed maneuvering and traversal mechanics that we had before but in these distinct modes that are integrated with lore and integrated with the ship, the ship functions such that there's costs and payoffs for, for being in each of the two modes. So let's start with standard control mode um, and what this means. So this is the mode that we intend to be the functional mode of the ship, whether it's combat or mining or any of these kind of core kind of things the ship does. We want the player to do these things in this mode. And what this does is, is it reduces the speed of the ship, but it also enables the shield to be turned on. And obviously the intent behind this is this is where you do your combat. It's where the guns are on, the missiles can be armed and fired, and all the kind of operational things the ship does operates within this mode. The speeds that you can reach in SCM are somewhat limited, somewhere between two and 300 meters per second, tuning, uh, tuning pending. Um, but this is basically the hard cap, which you cannot ex not really exceed. You can slightly exceed the... I actually do like that it extends the um, range of the speedometer because one of the things that kind of annoys me in the current flight mode is how, like if I'm rolling the mouse wheel and I want to get a certain speed, it's harder because going up to the, where it gets red is from here to here, right? But now that they're extending it, going up to where it's red is from here to here. So you can have smaller increments, which is nice. Could have changed the... the, the uh, the model of adjusting it anyways, but that is a nice side this effect. by using a boost, but you cannot maintain any velocity beyond that SEM limit for a longer period of time. So we're thinking of this as some kind of energy management system. So you can go a little bit faster with a little bit more accelerations 
when you need to, but you know that you ha it is a limited resource uh, and you should use it carefully. Specifically, the boost space is interesting for, for space combat because that boost spa space is not, is not spheric as it was before. You can boost the fastest if, you, uh, if you're going forward on a straight line and you have a lot of debuffs when you're trying to boost backwards. That alone gets us a lot of interesting maneuvering space and variation in the day-to-day -day dogfight maneuvering, so to speak. Importantly, you don't have your quantum drive available in this mode. The idea is that quantum is restrained to the quantum traversal mode. The second mode is quantum control mode, or QCM. Or Q yeah, that's why I feel like they've included the quantum boost in master modes, because it is the second mode of the modes. Never talked about, though. This is, I think, the more interesting side QM. of it. What this mode does like is it unlocks your maximum velocity that your ship can reach. So when you were limited before to 200 to 300 meters per second, now you can go to 1200, 1400 meters per second, whatever your ship allows you. During the development um, of the quantum mode, we realized we needed something that was a little bit more kind of about traveling large distances, but not at the distances that you need to, you know, scoot a bit quantum and drive and travel across the universe. So we've created this feature called Quantum Boost, which is available in the quantum mode. And you can access it at any point. So at any point you want to kind of boost towards your location. Yee! Listen to that. Access it at any point. So at any point you want to kind of boost towards your location that you, you know, you can't look at that, but it's just a two throw away. And this boost is available for a limited amount of time. And it's purely on a straight line. Just guys, how like we're, we're all talking about combat speeds, but how long have we wanted to be able to quantum travel in any direction you want? <laughs> no more om markers <laughs> like oh my god i love that makes me sweat <laughs> the idea of of free exploration in this game happening again makes me so excited for the possibility of points of interest asteroid stuff yeah you used to be able to do this again all of this is like how the game used to function different speed modes different uh, being able to quantum where you wanted, and they're bringing it back. God dang it. I love it. Smash into planets, folks. You deserve it. To give you like a, a ballpark, quantum boost will allow you to go to a target fast if it's within, let's say, 50,000 kilometers, whereas you will use quantum travel to do very long range jumps between, with, between planets. So uh, quantum mode allows you to go very, very fast with up to like 1200, 1400 meters per second when you want to zip really fast over a planet. It also allows you to do quantum boost to quickly go between points of interest, which are rather close to you. And it allows you to go to travel long distances between, uh, between planets and, and large scale stellar objects. But it comes at a cost. Your capacitor systems are non-functional because they interfere with the quantum bubble that is allowing you to go fast. You won't have shields. Your shields will will collapse right away when you when you uh, when you swap into quantum mode. Your weapons will stop working because anything that's firing outwards of your ship will disintegrate the quantum bubble. Your countermeasures won't work, uh -oh. and you they're going to have to figure out some lore reason for why that's not true with tractor beams, or else they're in trouble with the SRV. We'll also not be able to use thrusted boost. So basically, all your capacitor and combat-related systems are turned off instantly. When you switch between modes, there'll be a little period of time where everything has to spool up and change. So you will lose your shields during this, you won't have your weapons during this, but you also won't be going fast. So there's a, a risk-reward element when you need to switch modes. So it's going to be a very kind of conscious choice of what mode you should be in at any particular point. So if you feel the threat of another someone that's close by, you're not quite sure what their intention is, maybe switch to standard control mode and be safe. Or you can switch into quantum mode and escape. And this is going to kind of bring in an element of danger and an element of risk. Because uh, going into the two different modes is like a systemic thing within the ship's items, um, we actually have the opportunity now to define ship roles that can block people from escaping, either using devices that suppress the quantum bubble or devices that can effectively interfere with your ability to transfer between the modes. For example, specific ships like interceptors can be tuned such that they have a higher standard control mode speed, so they're able to catch up with people. Or, for example, Ooh. make the swap between the modes faster and more efficiently so that they could catch up with you, go into standard control mode and attack you 
Ooh. more effectively as per that's interesting so like a ship could be specially made to be a ship that darts in gets shots in and darts out because it can transition quickly whereas another ship might transition slowly but have a lot more power for the size or something it has a little more customization options maybe uh they will allow us to use certain components to decrease the time between the switch maybe components that yeah can like make make the switch faster power up faster or slower the properties of their ship versus another ship which might not be as good at doing something like that it's something that's fundamentally changed the gameplay experience for us and this is working now um you know and we're playing it every day in the studio we're refining it we're tweaking bits here and there and um, but we're at that stage now where we're tweaking and balancing we've got the core features it's there in the game playable and the difference it's made on the game for us is it's basically night and day because the speeds have been limited in standard control mode suddenly fights are a lot closer the accelerations of ships similarly have been retuned a little bit and their afterburner strength has been retuned a little bit to make it so that you can orbit around ships and have a lot more interesting maneuvering um, and because the ranges are closer maneuvers that would be performed by your ship have a much more significant impact because you're closer so if i like thrust up or down you'll immediately see the difference so similarly, things like capital ships uh, effectively get a buff to their offensive capabilities with this change because suddenly you can't orbit a capital ship at high range and high speeds. Um, you have to get a lot closer, which will make the turrets much more effective at shooting you. Turrets become more important and working as a group to attack capital ships is more important than it has been before. We know from internal playtest that the master mode stuff works. We know that it works with our uh, flight retunings and it's very exciting. It will yet take a while to ship this to the PU because the amount of ships you fly in Squadron 42 is rather limited, whereas in Star Citizen we have about, I don't know, more than a hundred ship records at the moment. But the whole hard problem of designing this thing in the first place is over. We just need to get the numbers in now. Honestly, I, I think that what would have made this awesome, I see it as you've got full arcade and you've got full immersive sim right you've got set your ship up like they're doing with resource management and say that everything that happens to this ship and everything the ship does factors into a resource and then tell the people you have to decide where you want those resources to be if you want those resources to go to your weapons and shields then you're not going to be able to access your full potential of your power system or your uh your thrusters that i feel like is the full immersive way of making this happen the full arcade way would just be kind of like this change with master modes but i guess this would be a pretty arcadey version of that i'm trying to think of i feel like there's still a lot of choice happening here i guess the full arcadey way of working would be basically if you detected an enemy ship it would automatically change your ship into combat mode and this way they're trying to find a halfway point where you can decide when things are changed but they are forcing the differences to kick in because that's what they want to do. And they keep going back to the idea that, hey, we tried to make changes without forcing them and that didn't work. So now we're forcing them. This is where they go into detail and start to explain some of the stuff they were talking about. We want it to be about those moments where you, where you really engage in combat and it becomes about outmaneuvering your opponent rather than this kind of slingshot kind of nurse on nurse combat we've kind of been used to. And so we're doing this by introducing Master modes are basically two different operational states for the for the vehicle. Uh, Yogi, why don't you what, tell us what the two operational states are? What are the two master modes? So the one state is um, basically your your combat mode. Um, we're still like uh, talking about whether it's uh, should be like standard control mode or actual just combat mode. Um, this is the mode in which you do the majority of your gameplay, and like you you're gonna do um, yeah all the combat stuff. You're gonna uh, you're probably gonna do mining uh, in that as well. Um, and the other mode, uh, which you swap your ship into, is it was called QCM in our in our presentation uh, recently. We just we're gonna just kind of call it NAV mode because it's more it's it's more descriptive um, uh, name for it. Um, and this one allows you to use your quantum mode and it allows you to unlock the high velocities, but it makes your ship very very vulnerable in terms of like there won't be shields or weapons uh, working during the time. And basically that is the idea to watch which just not gonna lie y'all i could not do their job 
I guess they've had a lot of time to like go over this and test it and stuff. So they're really confident in it. But if I saw the reaction to master modes, the, like even though they've come out and tried to explain it multiple times, I just wouldn't be able to, <laughs> to stick by it fully. Maybe that's because it's not a game design decision I'm all that passionate about. Um, but it's such a big change. I'd constantly be second guessing if I missed something, you know? The looter, like we're swapping, like we're separating these two gameplay systems apart from each other. So you can either choose to be like high performant and dangerous, or you can be fast, right? And uh, uh, travel and navigate around the worst, but you can't do it both at the same time. I saw somebody, I saw a comment on Reddit uh, just a day or two ago about somebody was saying that master modes aren't even in Squadron 42 yet. They're not actively in testing. They are in Squadron yes. 42. They are actively in testing. They are working now. Yes, yes. We've been testing this for months now. Um, so it's been actively in the game. Uh, we've been play testing ourselves on our own team, but we've also been testing with the, with, with um, you know, we've, you know, we've, we've also been put out there, you know, to the general studio as well. Um, so we've definitely been in a really good feedback loop and um, we're kind of really excited about that because the internal results for us have been really good um, and really positive. Just so folks can get a timeline in their heads, you know, for, for all the folks who, who make their streams and their videos and about how long ago did Master Modes, the, the, how long ago did the idea for Master Modes happen? I think we're talking a good year and a half ago. Um, I think it was. Uh, we started to really kind of realize we were in that kind of loop of problems and we need a way out of that problem. <clears throat> so then we started discussing what can we do um you know the the basic other ideas were like well let's just let's just not go very quick but then it's like well we stop the a to b travel being fun and the speed being fun because the speed is fun it's really important for the general game it's really important for racing as well that ships can go quickly because racing needs to feel like a challenge mm -hmm. um so we started kind of just sitting down and going right you know how you know how we're going to make this work because we've got this problem if we limit speed we've got this problem What's the overarching solution to this? Um, so you said a year, year and a half ago. Was this a Eureka-like moment? Is this one of those things where somebody was just in a meeting and they're like, holy crap, I got it? Or was this a, a, a contested issue? Was, 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 was everybody on board at first? Or how did this come about? Walk uh, me through the history of this. Uh, what, what was this like when this was coming up? Um, <clears throat> it was interesting because we, we were never going to be able to stop the speed the high speeds in the game. <clears throat> so we knew we had that problem. And I, and, I, and I would say it was a sort of a Eureka moment, but also we faced some challenges trying to get this through as well. So it's kind of like, yes, we've got a really cool idea. Oh, but you know, we've got these problems to solve. So. What, what was the problem? I mean. Doesn't want to tell what, us the problem. You had a problem <laughs> getting master modes into the game approved? Is that what you're saying here? Yeah, it was more like just, because it's such a major change to the game, we had to convince people it wasn't going to break racing, it wasn't going to break man, it wasn't going to break all the other systems we have in the game because it's so fundamental to the way ships work. Mm. Because it, you know, because you, because we look literally saying we've got a combat mode where these systems work, you know, we've got navigation mode where these systems work, and it's such a fundamental change to the game. It has to be approved by so many people, um, you know, which is never easy, you know, because everyone is trying to look after their features, which is the right thing to do. So we, you know, it was definitely a challenge trying to convince other teams as well that this is going to be the best solution for everyone for the game we've And I have to imagine a, a part of the reason why it's not immediately into the persistent universe because it has to go through all this testing with all these other gameplay features you're talking about. Yeah, so it's, so it, so it's quite a challenging feature to develop because one, it's going to squadron first, so it's a single player focus first on, um, in terms of getting this through, but we've also had to help, but also to move it to the PU, it needs to be fully de de developed for the multiplayer and also due to the um you know and also due to the resources we have to you know we are dependent on the dam streams as well um and because of the squadron focus the dam streams have been prioritized and it's where this fits within that as well the switch between the modes themselves um because it can't be too easy if you switch back and forth on, on a dime there's no reason to have the two the part of what makes the two dynamic is this transition between them so let's talk about that transition how long are we talking is the length of time dependent on different ships or different ship types and is the length components. of time something that can be a uh, one day adjusted through the use of components and yeah. tuning and stuff what, what, are, what are we thinking here 
Yeah, so yeah, so um, there is a time difference. Um, it is ship based, um, but it can also be component based as well because you've got the shields going up and down. Um, because we didn't want you to press a button, doom, gone, and you're just in different modes. Because we want the player to make that key choice when they're in the well, you know, when they're in the master mode for combat, for example, we want them to be in that combat mode because they want to do that thing that they've chosen to do. Mm -hmm. um, but there's consequences to that. And it's the same with it in our flying navigation mode without the shields. There's a choice to that, that you can go fast and you're just doing your A to B stuff as and you don't want to get involved in combat. So there is that consequence of you can't just press a button in this instant. Um, so, you know, so if you go from combat mode, for example, to navigation mode, your shields will have to go down. And then to go back, your shields will have to go back up. But it's not an instant thing. And it will vary depending on the act. And, and um, you know, it will vary depending on the components as well. Um, nice. That had so much tactical choice, though. That, that, that is such a good freaking. See that I think makes it feel more of a kind of a, not not a full sim component, but definitely takes it away from the arcadey side. The fact that you can edit that and build your ship based on what you want to be able to do. If you want a ship that basically flies like it used to fly, and you're just hitting that button and transitioning between modes in like half a second, maybe you can still fly really fast and fight. But maybe that power supply runs out very quickly or maybe it makes your shields a lot weaker like i actually that actually could make the game better depending on how they handle it definitely builds more options for ships at least it's now now during fights uh or during attacks you're being raided by a pirate or whatever you it's not just oh flip a mode and get out you have to just you have to you have to determine when the best time is going to be. You have to know your ship and precisely how long it's going to take your ship versus their ship to, to make these switches. Uh, and then it opens up the door for tons of customization with the ships between the different components and the tunings and such. So that, you know, we like the, you know, there are many like it, but this one is mine. It's going to allow people to, to fine tune their ships uh, and, and have a reason to do so. Yes. Yeah, I mean, you know, and you know, you know and that's the great thing about this is it it gives the, the player choice. That's you know something we're really keen for is is like we, it, you know, is we provide the underlying system, but we provide the choices within that as well. And that's really key for us, you know, as a gameplay team, is players have those choices, you know, because people play the game for all kinds of different reasons. There's some people like to go out there with all, you know, you know, with you know, with, you know, with all your, um, your guns blazing, for example, and they can do that. But if they do that, the other players are going to know that they're in that mode and they're all guns blazing. So it's a disadvantage to that because they're going to be more aware that that person's in that mode. Do we do we know what happens if you switch modes at super high speeds? Like if, if you're if you're if you're in nav mode and you're you're traveling at the fastest speed possible and then you suddenly switch over. So you slow down very aggressively and your face almost comes off. Promise. Expense style. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but you know, it's going to be a very aggressive D. Um, D it's like the expanse. Um, well, oh, like, wait, he literally just said that, huh? <laughs> be very aggressive to slow down from that um, speed. You know, and that's another thing, you know, that's going to be a critical choice. If you have to do that high speed, there's going to be a reason that you've done that. Um, but there's, there's going to be a consequence to it. Uh, it's, it's actually quite quite interesting because like when we, when we tested that first, um, the decelerations we got were like up to like 50, 60 G, something like that, right? Jesus. <laughs> So that's obviously nothing that you can survive easily, right? Um, but we At didn't all? see this effect because uh, our GeForce tuning doesn't react to like uh, decelerations that are taking that short amount of time. So basically nothing happened, but what we actually want to- I think that's the, probably the thing I hate most about this. The fact that when you switch modes, it artificially slows you down. That seems dumb to me. It feels like it should just limit your thrusters and you continue to go a certain speed until, you know, magic space inertia slows you down to SCM speed. Again, not great that we even have speed limits of any sort in space, but like, I don't like the idea of a speed limiter kicking in like that, even if it's not super fast. It just, meh. To achieve is like when you do an, an unhealthy, like if you, if you flip the switch too fast and uh, maybe even like, uh, take into account that you might have like ice algae, right? right? And this this is supposed to like knock you out, right? Um, 
but uh, that specific part is not is not in, but it is planned so that you need to prepare when you actually want to slow down. Would are we considering or would we consider a third master mode specifically for racing? A Something threshold. that would get us the speed and the maneuverability without any of the weapons, the shields, stuff like that. Because it doesn't seem like I don't know if either one of these ones that we're talking about seem totally ideal for racing. The speeds that we were hitting for well the well um the, the actual speeds of combat were probably just not enough to make racing feel exciting. So, and then it's actually had like a fundamental impact on the choices we've made with the design for master modes is to make sure that racing works. So we've got boost now, which works outside of the actual combat mode. Um, it might work a little bit differently, but we're gonna have boost outside of the combat mode now. And that's, uh, and that's come specifically from racing and the needs of racing. You know, because I say, you know, we're mm. building lots of different, you know, wells now where... That's also kind of a big move. No boost in SCM. You know, race is possible. That means when you hit, like, the shift key and it makes any of your thrust act a little bit stronger, no more of that during combat. We're actually doing, you know, a lot more support for racing now to build it, you know, officially within the game because it's come from the community. You know, they're the ones making all these interesting levels out the wells that we build. And, you know, and now we're going, right, we're going to start making this, you know, as part of the actual game. You know, so we have to support this. And one of the, you know, um, part of this big process of master merge was the roles. And we want the racing ships to be, well, racing ships, you know. You know, so they're going to be very, you know, they're going to go very quickly still. They're going to be light, they're going to be agile. But you're not really going to want to do a combat. Even if it's come weapons, you're probably not going to really want to take them in combat. But they're going to make, but the balance for us is making sure they're quick enough to escape but there's still that risk there in combat. It's yes, going to please. stay in Squadron 42 for a while. Um, uh, just you know, so it can do all the internal testing so that it can be uh, very focused. We talked about it in the DCC thing. So you can you know, focus on these specific ships and get these done before you have to expand it to all of the ships of the of the PU. Yeah, and that's the big thing for us is this is a lot of work. Um, so so to, like releasing the, to releasing the PU, it's a massive feature for us because it changes almost every single component in the game. It changes every single ship in the game as well, from both a ship performance perspective, so to make sure that ship is within its performance window, um, but also its health as well, um, and just how it behaves in the game. It does, you know, we've got, we have over 100 ships now you can fly in the game, and that takes a lot of testing and a lot of tuning to do, so, you know, and also we've got a lot of multiplayer testing to do. You know, we've you know we've got to make sure it looks correct so the players understand the master modes on the UI. Um, so there's a lot of work to bring this feature together. But you know, we've got the fundamental feature together. Um, in terms of you know S42 now, it's in there. You can change all the speeds. Um, but that's on a very limited amount of ships and on a very limited amount of components right now. So to get it in the PU is a lot more work because we don't just want to release this. Like work in progress and say right this is on like five ships right now you know go try it it's just not something we can do because it's so fundamental to the entire component structure we have in the game uh oh i'm sorry one last question i asked you this during the filming where we've been several months on i asked you a <laughs> simple question like do we finally have it do we really have it is this really it i'm gonna ask you again is your answer changed is this is this it this is it this is everything all right. <laughs> All right. So everything you ever asked for. Okay. So my friends, that is our talk about the first half of this. Um, it's a lot. There's a lot going on there. And we will be talking about that probably several times throughout the next six months as these more information comes out about these modes. I think there's not enough information about them yet. I mean, we don't even know what the UI looks like, let alone the timing of transitions. Um, we don't know how long it takes for weapons to power up going into SCM. I think there's a lot more that can be built into the nuance of this system to make it something that's interesting to use. Definitely going in the direction of more arcadey, but it's retaining some good choices and immersive elements with it. It, it seems like a decent halfway point to make gameplay more fun more accessible and still allow people to kind of play how they want. So from here, we're gonna talk about quantum travel. 
This is kind of the side of things that has been less talked about. I think people are a little less aware about, but there is a big change coming up to quantum travel. We don't have any video footage showing it. We don't have any sound bites talking about it. We barely have any information on this whatsoever. So what I did was I pulled up basically every mention that we have had to give you an idea of how extensive the change is. To start out though, we will be going to Richard Tyrer and Chris Roberts to hear what they have to say about quantum boost. So this is kind of our transition from master modes talking about quantum boost into quantum travel because I think quantum boost and quantum travel are very closely related. One is just kind of a slower, more player driven form of the other. And they likely, in my opinion, will come at the same time. I think you've seen quantum boost in some of the earlier videos. Um, the premise that we want you to be is, you know, we've got this vast universe. So we want radar and scanning. We actually, you know, we have this smaller radar scanning of on the FPS. You have the smaller one that's giving you information in the room and then the larger charged one that's giving you information about maybe the floor. The that hands. You're on. It's all and about it's the, the hands. same principles in the ship side. It's that we want a smaller one that is fairly instantaneous. And that's kind of giving you information about the people you're fighting or, you know, your, your local environment. And when I say small, I'm talking, say, sub 100 kilometers. You know, that's just giving me information around this area. But then we've got the charge scan wave. And that should be giving me information about things that are 10, 15, 20,000 kilometers away. And then that's why, where Q-Boost comes in and the fact that you're Q-Boosting to these locations, you're not having we to We made go, the circle. We okay, got around the Q-Boost. a quantum travel marker there that's a million kilometers away. That's like, okay, I'm making a conscious decision to go there. But for Q-Boost, it's like, okay, I am there. I want to boost around the environment, but I want to have things spread around so that, you know, we're not just cramped in because... Radar and scanning is fundamentally, it has two purposes. One purpose is to give you information about the things in your environment. And the second purpose is to help you explore. It's to help you find things that are not necessarily apparent because space is a big, dark place. So we need that. We want to be able to take advantage of that. So when you have this ability to detect things that are much further away, all of a sudden you start to feel like yeah, you are that might. Which means that they need to change scanning models so that we can detect things from further away I mean, you've got to fly to them to yeah to investigate them I and mean, so i mean i think that's like that's a good example of something on squadron that you know we were also looking at like how do we solve the problem of your you know patrolling an area right and it's not very much fun if you patrol an area and then it's like i you know space is big i go to this area and then i look around and i my radar covers 10 kilometers in front of me and that's it that doesn't feel like i was patrolling you know, a large area of space. And so we we sort of were thinking about, well, how, you know, really, if we think about it, there's like short range, which is, you know, what you would call the standard control mode, like a slower exploration. I come up to a, you know, a derelict or there's a cluster of asteroids that I'm going to fly around to see what's happening. And then there's the medium range, which hasn't really existed in both the PU uh, and is something that we really wanted to have in squadron and we really if you're a twitch subscriber patreon member youtube channel member thank you so much for your support it does a huge help to me and my wife keeping this going but also um one of the exclusive videos talks about what he's talking about right now i did not give him a flattering pause that's my bad the idea of short medium and long distance exploration this is the conversation where they kind of started to delineate that and i think it was really important uh and it's something that we really wanted to have in squadron and we really should be in the pu which is well you know what's that over there that's ten thousand kilometers away the, the equivalent of being on a planet and going there's a mountain over there i can see it i don't know what's on it but i'm gonna drive over there i'll walk over to that mountain uh, and so the idea with sort of the, the scanning is like the wave goes out and yeah, you'll pick up things 10, 20, 30,000 kilometers away. So you definitely won't be able to understand what's there, but you'll say, mm, there's something there's point of interest. I'll get it. There's a point of interest. And so you'll be able to map things and then we need to get there. But you know, the quantum travel spooling up, spooling down or, and we, and so this is the whole quantum, the idea of quantum boost is your sort of, uh, mid-level traversal speed where it allows you it's probably about 10th the speed of the full quantum travel uh sort of you know not using all the quantum juice if you want to think of it that way mm, uh, but juice. it allows you to sort of get there pretty quickly yet and, another you know, thing named also after quantum appreciate the environment you're going through uh and you know go over there oh i go up to the mountain okay no i can see what's that oh there's trees here oh that's really cool and 
that opens up a whole bunch of gameplay. I mean, definitely helps out in, in, in Squadron, but in the PU it's massive because in the PU, when this rolls into the PU, now you can have exploration gameplay in space. So for instance, you could be- Never there. had. Yeah, we've never had. So never had. In, so you, well, you could be we in you know, a big nebula gas cloud and you scan and you, oh, I get a contact 20K away. Okay, I'm going to boost over to see whether, oh, I come up, oh, look, is a, you know, it's a derelict or there's there's a d abandoned mining station, there's this group of rocks over here, or I go over here and, and we can even in the PU be in a case where you can sort of almost sort of, ra you know, procedurally generate some points of interest when you, start to scan that you can go and, and, and visit so i think you know the whole idea of sort of these three these three sort of levels of traversal one is you sort of you know regular you know non-quantum one where you're just using regular thrusters which is much more sort of limited and you know work for you know combat and stuff like that then there's a, the quantum boost which is sort of to you know fast fast run over to a place and then there's the the quantum travel which is the really long okay i'm going to go to this planet that's 500,000 kilometers away and i'm going to be in quantum for five minutes to get there uh and i think that's going to open up a huge amount in the pu uh i mean it definitely it makes a big difference to the gameplay i mean makes the exploring in squadron in space feel much bigger yeah because that was the thing we we're trying to fo follow and i think it's a problem in the pu right now is when you're in space it's sort of like you know, most of it is but an empty point. It's empty for you, yeah. right? It's like you spend your time around the space stations or, uh, you know, some asteroids here or around the planet. But we want to open it up a bit more and have that idea of, oh, I can I can detect something. I want to investigate it. So the whole sort of exploration, um, investigative gameplay that can happen in space now because of these different modes of travel and the scanning is going to be uh, a, a huge, huge deal. Uh, so we can see it one more time here. So just to call out, that's going to be the old HUD. Yeah, that, that is the old HUD. Way, too busy. This, that's is, been here. this is Squadron 42 footage that we're seeing here. So uh, whatever you see here is not necessarily an asset from Star Citizen, but the HUD looks a lot better. If not a bit busy, which they talk about, but better. It's the old HUD. Yeah. Earlier yeah. we were showing the old, old, old. So we've done a scan here. Those are, that's also the old points of interest because the point of interest will be just points yeah but basically we've done a scan and we've got some points of interest that are uh you know multiple 10ks away and you can see the distance there it says thirteen thousand kilometers on the right hand side so this is obviously just placeholder ui for the quantum boost and uh, we again you can just boost over there yeah. and it obviously has this interactive gameplay which obviously went into uh yeah and this by the way is that that's all program i work in progress from yogi uh on uh the quantum boost um because because you're just gonna have to stay in the zone to keep and boost otherwise you'll fall out of boost uh but we've gone over to the the, the planet here so what it's allowing you to do is sort of have that mid-level traversal and investigate things uh without so it looks a lot like quantum travel and i think they actually did a changeover here from quantum mode to scm mode if you look at the end here just keep an eye right here So they switch to SCM, switching over, switching over, but the shields are up. So shields are down, they're in quantum mode. SCM mode just got triggered, shields are already up. So this timer here doesn't seem to correlate with the shields going up unless it's just not finished in this moment. Um, but it definitely seems like these shields go up pretty quickly as soon as you hit the button. They switch. Yeah, you can see shields down. Why is it stop? Why you stop? Let's try that again. So you got shields down, shields down, shields down. And then at some point they flip this shields are still down 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 we're like five frames in and then it just stops going frame forward that's weird but the shields go up quickly do we have to choose a point no this is free travel this is you can just go wherever you want for this which is ah nice
have that mid-level traversal and investigate things uh, without having to, uh, you know, spend forever at 1,200 meters per second or quantum traveling over it. It's over too quickly. I don't know if it was too clear on the video that we were seeing, but on the video we say we were originally in SCM mode, yep. standard control mode, and then um, we switched to quantum mode. So the spool up wasn't really the spool up for the quantum boost. The spool up was just there's a spool up as you go into quantum mode your shields powered down so you so you you know there is some risk when you're in the fast traversal so you can just mode click and go uh, and the quantum drive powers up but once you're once it's spooled up and you look at a place you can boost towards it and it's just you press shift and it's instant yeah and <gasps> and so so for people that want to you know go wait oh, isn't that exactly you know, how wanting... super cruise mode works you press a button and you enter. No, you press a button. It counts down Super Cruise and you just enter into it. This is it's stars that it's in Super Cruise. Star Super oh, Cruise. And you look Star at a place you can boost towards. <laughs> and it's just you press Shift and it's instant. Yeah. And and so so for people that want to you know go oh what's that over there you know people will be wanting to I just want to like free quantum right yeah. There it is. Those are the words. And there's people want to do that for quite a while. It's not getting on your ball. Yeah. You know, second star of the right. <sighs> Breathe it in, folks. Free quantum. Straight on till morning. So that was quantum boost. Now I will show you the other side of this possible quantum update that I've been following. Quantum travel has been being talked about reworked. Honestly, this is as far back as I went, but I, it probably goes back even further than April. Um, this is May 2022. So more than a year ago. And what we have here is they talked about this is for pu this will be for pu it's not it's not coming in at 320 this is just looking at the general design of the feature but what we were seeing at may of last year was a, an update to ai that read ai tech worked on a spaceship functionalities including several improvements to quantum travel and quantum boost now ships can accelerate while spooling before the actual jump this functionality was also exposed as an assignment for missions this isn't super specific but it is one of the first times we see quantum boost mentioned and it does let us know that AI are being made at that time to work with quantum boost. We go further down the monthly report and the features team, this would be what we're actually doing, is saying outside of release support, uh, great progress was made on quantum travel boost, primarily making it right, feel right as ships accelerate and, main, and attempt to maintain heading. This feature also supports points of interest, allowing player pilots to fly towards highlighted destinations. This is what we just saw in those videos, just kind of confirming that the, the feature team themselves was working on this all the way back in May of 2022. So a big initiative. And then this is where we're gonna see most of our updates. VFX Concept Art began working on the quantum travel rework. This included storyboarding the gameplay requirements at the different stages of the process, such as spooling, entering, and exiting. They're currently investigating how it could look in engine. So again, an entire visual feature and AI rework to how quantum travel is going to work. That was May 2022. Next step forward is July of 2022. I think I might have skipped June for whatever reason. We just discriminate June sometimes. Again, the VFX team, I believe, was the one mentioned here. VFX concept kickstarted pre-production on the quantum travel experience and general quantum travel visual overhaul again focusing on the visual overhaul of quantum travel now we move forward to august 2022 vfx team again last month saw vfx concept art continue to iterate on quantum travel effects which involved collaborating with a vfx artist to prototype the effects in the engine okay so more vfx work on quantum travel moving forward to september 2022 last month saw the continued prototyping of the quantum travel vfx rework with a focus on refractive elements to emphasize the forming of the whole hugging bubble while a ship's drive spools up so they're starting to get really into the vfx even before you enter in quantum travel of just kind of ramping up i guess kind of building that tension of you're entering quantum travel it's really cool look at the vfx wow and cool sounds and stuff so they're very much focusing more on this sounds like a more immersive experience than what quantum travel is right now. October 2022, next month forward, again, we're on the features team on the vehicle side saying, work also began on the new version of quantum travel, which currently involves refactoring the current feature in preparation for re rework. So 
they weren't even working on the actual feature at this time. They were working on the existing feature to prepare it for the rework. The VFX programming team's time was split between fire, quantum travel, and tool work. For fire, work began to decal shading to achieve glow, burn, and soot on objects within the scene. This is February of this year, by the way. Quantum travel now has support for quantum casting and redshift, along with various other code improvements. If you're wondering what redshift looks like. I think it's meant to be like a audio, uh, like a frequent frequency Doppler effect almost as as uh, light travels faster. I believe it turns more red. Cool more effects on the graphics and VFX programming side of things. And look at that. VFX team also continued to refine the new quantum travel effects and work began on several new vehicles, including one with unusual thrusters. We all know what that is now. Um, this is March of this year. We're marching through the months and here we've got more graphics VFX programming work being done. Meanwhile, the VFX programming team continued their work on quantum travel and fire. Quantum travel effects now rotate correctly based on movement direction and various visual improvements were made based on feedback. And then May of this year. So we've now gone a full year of hearing about quantum travel in the monthly reports. This time from the VFX programming team saying, the graphics team, okay, sorry, the graphics team saying they spent the month working on performance improvements and new features, including screen space shadows, improvements to quantum jump tunnels, and render the texture zone culling. So again, more, more stuffs. And then we have the planet tech team finalizing quantum obstacle generation with generic shapes in asteroid fields. This I feel is their part of a rework to quantum travel that takes into account asteroid fields, space stations, planets, and other stuff that would be in your quantum path and actually dropping you out when you get there. This is really important because I have a major feature that is going to kind of finish off the Stanton system in terms of like planetary features known as the Aaron Halo Belt. We all know about the Aaron Halo Belt being a really massive uh, asteroid belt that isn't that dense. I mean, it's dense in terms of our space like real life but in the game it's not that dense but it's meant to be a place that's impassable in between i believe hurston and arcorp or arcorp and crusader i can't remember which one massive gates owned by arcorp that clear a path through the asteroids that commercial traffic big haulers and spaceships are meant to use and i'm sure they're going to either give us the ability to find other ways to navigate it or use those same pathways and I believe part of the effort to do that is working on this quantum obstacle generation. So we'll keep an eye on that. I believe it shows up in the following monthly report, but this is May, June of this year. They kind of talked about the same thing on the graphics team, actually the planet tech team. Uh, they said quantum obstacles for generic shapes were also physicalized and passed to the engine team for integration. So they worked on them in, what is this, May, finalizing the quantum obstacle generation, and then they got it to the engine team who will probably start putting it in the game. This could be another 4.0 thing, to be honest. A new quantum travel with generic shapes, with a star map where you can set your own beacons and fly to them, points of interest with uh, quantum boost, master modes. All of that could be something that they're trying to drop with 4.0 at the same time. It's looking more and more likely. Folks, that's about it. That is your look into quantum travel, into master modes, into how the flight model is changing in a pretty big way in Star Citizen. There's a lot to talk about here. We're gonna keep going over this over the next year and up until 4.0 probably. And then after that, we'll obviously do a little review, some gameplay, but for now, I mean, if you enjoy these kinds of updates, if you like hearing more about development in Star Citizen features, where they're coming from, where they've been, where they've gone, consider coming and joining us live like this. These are, I think, good talks, good little deep dives into some of the more and less talked about parts of this game. There's just so freaking much that taking a couple hours like this, I think is a, a good way for us obsessive nerds to learn more about the game.